evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is DKL, and welcome back to Doki Doki Relapse. Um, uh, what happened last time? I think we're about to hang out with Monica, so let's do that. Seeing Monica with her guard down actually makes me feel more confident. Wait, that doesn't make me a butthole, does it? Let's try this again, shall we? I extend my hand towards her. Nice to meet you. My name is Super Booper, but all my friends just call me handsome. <laughs> Isn't that going a bit too far back? <laughs> I guess you got me on that one. Truth is, I've just been waiting to use that line for a while. You know, I think that Suki might have been right. Right? About what? You are a clown! <laughs> Man. I put you in a better mood and you would pay me with insults. It's hard knock life. This must be how Jay-Z and Dr. Evil feel. Sorry, but somebody has to make sure that ego of yours doesn't get too out of hand. Well, you've certainly got a lot of work ahead of you if that's your goal. I think I'll be able to manage. <laughs> if you say so. <clears throat> but we should get going. Front doors usually aren't a good hangout spot. Right, I'll let you take the lead. Hmm, that's an interesting choice. The walk to town is kinda long, but we managed to pass the time by talking. There's still an awkward silence here and there, but it's nothing too bad. So, now that we're here, what did you plan for us to do? I figured we could walk around window shopping until someone caught your eye. Our eye. Our, not your, our. <laughs> so you're saying you didn't really think this far ahead, huh? Huh. Making, plan making plans like this isn't really my style. I take pride in my spontaneity. That and the fact that most of the plans crash and burn. Spontaneity, huh? I didn't expect such a word from our most junior club member. Ha ha, good one, Monica. Now, if you're done hurting my feelings, perhaps we can continue to my spontaneous adventure. We keep walking along the sidewalk, looking into stores to see if we notice anything interesting. Monica seems especially distracted by a clothing store that has displays in the windows. I figured a girl like her would already have a closet full of clothes. Then again, I've only ever seen her out of uniform once. Hey, wait a second. Huh? What's up? She looks and ground for a moment before turning, returning her... Bleh. She looks around for a moment before returning her attention to me. Can... Can we go this way for a little while? She faces a street that breaks off from the main strip. Uh, sure. I don't see why not. Thanks, Super Booper. Before I even have time to say you're welcome, Monica begins to happily stroll away. Bye. <laughs> She seems... it seems like she has a bit more pep in her step as she does. What was that about? Why does she seem so scared that I would say no? You coming? Y yeah, wait up! Whatever the reason, it was kind of adorable. In a purely platonic way, of course. We make our way down the road, down a road that has smaller shops and some apartments scattered along it. I don't think I've ever been this way before, but I also don't come this far into town very often. Monica seems to be lost in a trance as she looks around at all the stores. Um, is everything alright? Huh? Oh! Uh, sorry, just, I'm just looking for something. Looking for something? You mind if I ask- THERE IT IS! Her sudden burst of energy almost gives me a heart attack. <laughs> Come on, let's go! She grabs me by the arm and begins to practically drag me along the sidewalk. I notice I'm being t pulled towards what looks like a coffee house. It looks kind of crappy. As we reach the, sh the uh, as we reach the door to the cafe, Monica suddenly realizes what she's done. Sorry, I guess I got kind of carried away. Don't worry about it. I I'd say I'm more surprised than anything. I've never seen you like this before. It's just been a while since I've come here. I'm sorry that I got too excited. I hope I didn't embarrass you. Seeing as the... Moxie? Seeing this defenseless side of Monica always manages to throw me off. I should keep it 
I should keep in mind that under all circumstances... No. I should keep in mind that under all that confidence is just a normal girl. <laughs> I'm not embarrassed. In fact, it's refreshing to see the side of you. It gives me time to recover from all the insults. Super blooper. Plus, it's great blackmail material. To think that the class star would drag me across the sidewalk just for a little coffee shop. The look on your face was pretty priceless. Thanks, Super Blooper. She just thanked me for threatening to blackmail her. Uh, no problem? But, Monica, this place... I look around the side of the building. It's bland, to say the least. There's nothing inviting people in or telling them about what they serve. If Monica hadn't dragged me here, I probably would have never even noticed the place. The sign above the door says, Kaneki's Cafe. Coffee. Kaneki's Coffee, not Cafe. I'm stupid. I apologize for that. But even that's hard to make out. It looks kind of run down. Oh, I get what you mean. The outside isn't much to look at. But I think you'll understand once we go in. I'll trust you on this one. But I'm only responsible if I get shanked. Deal. My fear of getting a knife put in me settles as we enter the cafe. Whoa, this place is actually kind of nice. I'm a little insulted that you thought I would take you somewhere that was a dump on the inside. <laughs> You're right. Now that I know you'll only take me to places that are a dump on the outside, I guess that's fair enough. But that aside, come on, let's sit down. I follow Monica as she takes a seat in the booth. I take a seat in the chair across from her, even though chairs are trash compared to booths. As I'm sitting down, I take a look at the, around the place. There are two waiters inside, and only one of other, and only one other group of two customers on the far end of the room. It's no surprise there aren't more people. You can barely even tell it's a cafe from the outside. One of the waiters I saw makes his way over to take our orders. While I feel like a total outsider, Monica talks like she owns the place. She and the waiter apparently know each other, so I just sit still awkwardly as they talk. Yeah, I would too. Once they've finished, we finally place our orders. I don't know anything about coffee, so I just order what Monica gets. I'm guessing it's not some crazy coincidence that you order the same thing as me. <laughs> you caught me. Truth is, I don't drink coffee very often. I don't drink it at all. And I've never ordered it at a place like this before. So I'm trusting that you've got good taste. Don't worry, you won't be disappointed. I'll hold you to that. I glance once more at the waiter who took our orders as he prepares our drinks. So you know that guy? He's using like friends or something. Oh, well... A secret love affair? I knew it! Haha, <laughs> very funny. But no, it's nothing like that. I just used to come here a lot, so I got to know all the workers pretty well. It's been a while since I talked to any of them, so I imagine you wanted to catch up some. I see. So wait, why'd you stop coming here if you liked it so much? Oh, I guess I didn't tell you. When I started the club, I did I just didn't have time to come anymore. Didn't have time? Couldn't you still come on weekends like this? Yeah, but it just wasn't the same. Monica? Here you go. The mood is broken as the waiter places our drinks on the table. Thank you. Y yeah, thanks. I can tell Monica doesn't want to talk about why she stopped coming anymore by the way she immediately begins drinking her coffee. What did she say by it wasn't the same? Did something happen to her that I didn't know that I don't know about? I let out an internal sigh as I'm bothered by the idea. Whatever it is, she'll tell me when she's ready. No use worrying myself over it now. I pick up my coffee and blow into it lightly before taking a sip. Honestly, it's a bit too bitter for my tastes, but I drink it anyway since I don't have much else to do. That's fair. A couple of minutes have passed and neither of us have said a word to each other. Monica is still finding solace in her coffee while I sit here looking at my empty cup. I glance up at her and notice the troubled expression on her face. What's wrong? Huh? What do you mean? Come on, I can tell something's bothering you. Sitting there thinking about it isn't going to solve anything. 
I'd be happy to listen if you want to talk about it. I, I, I was wondering if... If you tell me about... About you and Yuri. Well, crap. Wasn't expecting that. It's alright if you don't want to tell me. But honestly, it's been bothering me since yesterday. Sigh. Alright, I guess it wouldn't hurt to let you know. I proceed to tell Monica about the events that took place between Yuri and me. Our time in the club, her coming over to watch our movie, our kiss, our separation at her house, everything. Monica already made it clear that she knew about Yuri's cutting, so I felt it was okay to tell her about how I helped in that regard as well. I see. Dang, what am I supposed to say now? Super Booper, thanks for telling me. You're not mad at Yuri, are you? I... I don't think so. Huh. Well, that's reassuring. But if you're going to be mad at somebody, be mad at me, okay? You can't blame her for falling for my boyish charm and devilishly good looks. <laughs> Don't worry, I never said I was... I, I never said that I wasn't mad at you, too. Now you've got it. I smiled bashfully at her and tried to cheer her up. Thanks, Super Booper. It's no problem, but enough about me. I lean over the table towards Monica and got my hand around my mouth as uh, like I'm about to whisper. So you and this waiter guy, you sure there's nothing there? You better not be holding out on any juicy details. Ah! Monica pushes me away, almost causing me to fall backwards out of my chair. Fine, fine, but you better not be keeping good stuff for yourself. Don't make me tell them to kick you out. Good idea! I get kicked out, and then the two of you could be alone together. You could work the, my friend was a jerk, and I'm looking for a good guy angle. You know, putting you here might have been a bad idea. Probably. <laughs> I continue my teasing for a few more minutes. Monica gets a good jab at me here and there, but I've definitely got the upper hand. Once I've had my fun, she and she's nice and flustered, I decide to ease up on her. As much as you've been talking about him, I'm starting to think you're the one who's interested. Oh, please, I wouldn't want to take him away from you like that. Though, I do admit my charisma would make it hard to keep him at bay. Jeez, Natsuki was dead on about the ego. Well, when you're this amazing. But, enough about that. Did you have anywhere else you wanted to go after here? Hmm. Truth is, the only place in town I really... Truth is, this is the only place in town that I really enjoy going to. What about you? Do you have anywhere in mind? Nope, not one. You know, that bashful honesty of yours might need some toning down. <laughs> I'll work on it. But I really don't come to town that often, so my expertise is limited to the grocery and bookstore. Bookstore? Well, uh, yeah. I read things. Things that totally aren't manga. Like, everything except manga. Okay, then. I can't even spell magna. <laughs> I'm guessing it's not because of the manga. No! Uh, I mean... Yes? Darn double negatives. <laughs> Watching her laugh so innocently like this fills me with joy. I'm sorry, Monica. I really do wish I could make you happy like this all the time. We get, we agree to talk for a few more minutes before eventually re agreeing to leave. Once we've paid for our drinks, we make our way to the door. The fresh air and sunlight are more than welcome as we step outside. My butt is sore from sitting down for so long, and my legs feel like I haven't walked in forever. Man, we were in there for quite a while, huh? Heh, <laughs> don't tell me you were waiting for us to leave. That's... Awfully rude of someone who claims to be a gentleman. Wow. You step outside and the first thing you say is an insult. I'm impressed. <laughs> You've got some payback coming for everything you said about me and the waiter. <laughs> I guess that's fair. We fall back into our routine of small talk as we begin walking aimlessly down the sidewalk. So, your mom's a lawyer? That's pretty cool. Yeah, but she wants me to go to law school and become one too after I graduate. I can imagine expecta expectations for you are pretty high. That must be rough. It's not too bad. I've gotten used to it over the years. 
Monica, are you okay? I, I'm, I'm fine. It's just a headache. Come on, I'll take you home. It's alright. It, it, it's not that bad. Don't give me that. You want, it's obvious you don't feel well. Whether you like it or not, I'm taking you home. It's clear that Monica wants to object, but she knows that I'm not going to give in. I figured the walk home would have been heck for her, so instead I bit the bullet and got us a taxi. She tried to refuse at first, but didn't put out much of a fight as her head clearly began to feel worse. I noticed my own head beginning to hurt as well during the drive back, but luckily it's pretty manageable and doesn't bother me much. Once we arrived, I paid the driver the last of my cash and helped Monica to the door. Here, go inside and get some rest, okay? Do you have any painkillers you could take? Monica, please, you're not going to get better just by standing outside like the super blooper. Uh-huh. She steps closer and takes hold of the sleeves at my wrists. Please, don't leave me alone. Not again. M Monica? I, I just... I don't just have feelings for you. I... I love you, super blooper. Oh, boy! Oh, boy! Oh, boy! I, my heart stops as I hear her say this. So please, please stay with me. I hear fear in her voice as she grips around my wrist, as the grip around my wrist becomes tighter. What is she scared of? Why doesn't she want me to leave? I'll stay. You, you will? Yes, but only to make sure you get some rest. I couldn't leave here knowing that you felt this bad. I wipe away some of the tears on her face while giving a weak smile. Thanks, Super Booper. I sit at Monica's desk chair as I watch her fall asleep. Sigh. When we came inside, I helped Monica to her room before going into the bathroom to find some medicine she told me about. Once she told Kay, she insisted that I stay a little while longer, which I agreed to do. Now I'm alone in her bedroom. Now I'm alone with her in her bedroom, trying my best not to have a nervous breakdown. The fear, I, the fear I heard in her voice when she mentioned not wanting to be alone continues to plague me. I've only really known her for a handful of days, so why is she so attached to me? Not just that, but she told me she loved me. My heart sinks a little as I think about it. Maybe that was just the pain getting to her, but maybe it made her delusional? As much as I want to believe that, I know it's not the case. Dang it, I came here to try to make things better and I just ended up making them worse. The pain in my head grows as I clench my teeth in anger. I told Sayori I would fix things, but instead I just royally freaked up. I know I, I know it will continue to bother her, knowing that Monica still has a thing for me. I glance at her and see that her eyes are closed and her breathing is softened. The exhaustion from the last several minutes hits me as I stand up. I hear her mumble something as I'm leaving the door, but choose to as I'm leaving the room, but choose to ignore. Her. Why can't I read? Gulp. I take two more pills before returning to where I was sitting. The events of today played over in my. The events of today played over and over in my head when I first got home, but I guess they burned out. Now I'm just sitting at my table with a numbness that I can't describe with words. Oh, pardon me. I try to cheer myself up thinking about my time with Sayori today, but even those memories riddle me with guilt. Monica, what happened to you? I think this as I rest my head in my arms and close my eyes. Hmm. Hold on just a second. All right. I wake up to the sound of my phone vibrating on the table next to me. I groggily grab it and answer the call before checking to see who it is. Hello?